to greet everybody this morning and those who are uh, watching this on YouTube. We're in the 24th chapter of Genesis, as we mentioned just briefly before. But before I read in um, Genesis 24, I'd like to just, and you don't have to turn there, but I'm just going to turn myself to chapter 18, and I'd like to read what God himself has to say about Abraham. We're going to learn a little about Abraham and some other people in this next chapter. But in the 17th verse, just before he sends the, uh, the angels down to Sodom, he says, The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Now, if those words are true, and if God spoke them, you can trust to the fact that they are true. Then Abraham is living up to the word, as any human you know, can try, that he has received of God, and he is also shouldering the responsibilities that that word places on him as the head of his household. And the head of this household, in the first verse of chapter 24, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Not just the things we've read about. And we've read about a very great deal. But he's blessed him in all things. The big things, the little things. Careful to bless Abraham. And through Abraham has passed those blessings on to us. And Abraham said unto his eldest servants of his house that ruled over all he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, For adventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land, must I need to bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. And the Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spake unto me and swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, only bring not my son thither again. Now, I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Uh, as far as the reading is concerned, the story doesn't stop, but I'd like to stop and, and, and look at this just a little bit on what we read so far. How old do you think Abraham might be? Mm -hmm. Early 30s, maybe. Abraham? Abraham. Oh, Abraham. Oh, probably well, 137. Well, we know that when Sarah died, he was 137. And we know that when Sarah died, Isaac was 37. Now, chapter 24 doesn't say how old Abraham is. But we're going to find out later that Isaac is going to be 40 when he marries Rebecca. So this is somewhere between uh, the 137th year of Abraham's life and the, and the three years that we follow that. So... It isn't all that long um, <coughs> since uh, you know we left them up there with the, the death of Sarah. It's in the South Country, or at least she was, uh, 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 you know, before this servant swears this oath. Did you notice that in this narrative, the servant's name is not given? But before the servant's name was given, when Abraham is making the assumption that if he doesn't have a son, then Eliezer is going to be his heir. Mm -hmm. God says, fine man, but not your heir. <coughs> there are those who will tell you that this servant who is unnamed is undoubtedly Eliezer. Mm -hmm. I have my doubts. And the reason, I'm not saying that it can't be, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't hmm. say that. 
I'm saying that he is unnamed, and when Abraham says what he said about this one in my house is my heir, uh, Abraham is what, 75 years old? The servant will not be a kid. Abraham is now a minimum of 137 years old. You think it's the same steward? He's going to want to be on that kind of mission. It's 500 mile trip to where he's going to go and back. Right. So it's a thousand miles round trip. But you remember when the circumcision token is given to Abraham, the entire house is circumcised. Those born in your house. If Eliezer was looked at by Abraham as an heir, you can bet he had something. You can bet he had a son. He had what? He was a bet. He had a son. Oh, yeah. So if this isn't Eliezer, and, it may, and I don't think it, I don't think it is. It could be. He'd be a very old uh, steward to make this trip if he were. But if it isn't Eliezer, it's someone from his household, probably the son. We don't know for sure. I'm not teaching that as a doctrine. I want you to know that. I'm just trying to set the context of where this story is going to start from. And it touches, if that's true, it touches on the faithfulness of the steward. Do you see any hesitation on the part of the, he asked questions. You know, what if the woman doesn't want to come back? Well, you know, do I take Isaac up there? No. Nope. And Abraham is very careful to say twice, you do not take my son back there. Yeah. But before he says that, he says, I don't want her, I don't want him marrying a Canaanitish woman. Now, how long does Abraham live there now? Well. From 75, let's yeah, say 140. Yeah. What's the map on that one? 65. Think he knows these people? That's the reason he said it. He knew the children of half, didn't he, when he was bargaining for the cave? Who they were? Who their great-grandfather was? No, he's not going to let Isaac marry that. They, that is a, that's a cursed family. He knows it. Uh, they probably know it. No, he's not going to marry into that, because when you marry, you not only marry the person, you marry the family. Mm -hmm. Particularly yeah. in this part of the Orient. Mm -hmm. Now, Abraham is doing what a father should be doing uh, at that time and in that culture, and that is the, is the responsibility of the parents to arrange marriage of the heir. And Abraham is beginning to do that. Now, it's interesting that he commands, it's interesting to me, I don't know whether it is to you, we'll see how this strikes you, that he commands the servant to go back to his family, which he was supposed to have separated from. Leave your, you leave your uh, country, your family, your kindred, get out and get away. And the promise doesn't come and the blessings don't come to Abraham until he does finally separate from the last one, which is Lot. Right. Then the boy comes, then the promises come, and all the rest of it. But go back to where I was brought from. Now, I want you to notice, remember I told you, after Mount Moriah, Abraham is not the same man anymore. We're told in the scripture that the word of God to Abraham is, you know, get yourself up and go. Get yourself and go. Separate yourself from me. But look what Abraham says in verse 7. The Lord God of heaven, which took me, not sent me, not drove me, took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me that swore to me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, thou shalt take a wife unto my son from that. He, this, this man has come a little in his walk of faith. He realizes that the command of God is not just God's authority and God's right. It's also God's way of doing the best for you. You stay in that word of God, and things are going to things are going to be as good for you in this life as anybody can make them. He's still that infinite God, and he's giving God the credit. Now he's also giving an out to his servant. If the woman isn't willing, you can come back, but the son does not return. You just don't ever do that again. And the thought of Abraham's character there again, one time, please. The what? About Abraham's character and the way he he's, spoke to his he's, servant. He, well, the, the, what speaks to his character is the uh, uh, the leading and the uh, what did I say the credit, if that's the way you want to put it, 
that God's command is God's leading and God's blessing. Yes. Uh, he doesn't say that before, but he does now. He's, he's been to Moriah, and he saw the day of the Lord and, and was rejoiced and was glad to see it. This is not the same man. Inside, spiritually. Yeah. And I don't think that anybody can be who continues in a walk with Christ. I don't think it's possible. Peter was changed. He is at work both in you to both will and to do of his good plan. And, right? and we all know that Paul was changed. He wasn't the same yeah. after that meeting and that continued walk. The later epistles aren't the same as the early epistles of Paul. <coughs> he's, he's, yeah. I was changed too. Oh, would you like to tell us how that happened? Mm, walking with the Savior. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If it, you know, this comes down eventually as we're reading Bible stories. If we don't see how that applies in our own life, then we have got to go back to Mount Moriah and let something be made right and only God can make it right. It takes that meaning. Um, and, and then from there on, it takes that following. And here's where I'm going to have to break with my Baptist brethren. Because Jesus said, He who would come unto me let him what? Deny, him Deny him himself him. to Take what? up his cross. And then what? Follow me. Oh, does any of that ever stop? Mm -hmm. No. Daily, daily. Daily. And he who is not willing to take up that cross is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. You know, he who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. That becomes your point. And if you look now, Abraham is well stricken in age. He may have been made young once, but he was not kept young. He's aging. He knows that there is the end of the line. He's seen it for Sarah. He's going to do the last thing that he can do responsibly on earth, and that is for this son and this heir which was promised, he is going to do his best to make sure that he marries, number one, well and effectively as far as the word of God is concerned. And God's word is not going to break. Abraham will command his house and his family, and that's what he's doing. In the same way that Abraham was commanded to get out of Ur and go into the land that I will show you, he gives the command to that servant, don't you dare take my son back. Anywhere along that route, you don't take him out of this land. Is there a comment about ready to bubble up here? Do you want us to wait for it? No, oh. the thing is, Okay, we'll go on. this, this uh, teaching, about arrangement. Um, I just want to talk just a little bit about this, what's been corrupted with this. Abraham wasn't saying he didn't want them to marry a, a red, a yellow, black, or white woman. He wanted him to marry back to the family that How do you God had. The, the thing is, it's all those not Hittites about might have been, it's know, not, all the Hittites might have been red Indians. You're right. That's exactly right. My but people. look what's been done with this doctrine. Oh. That's true. What you're teaching is mm -hmm. true. But look what's been done with it that we can't marry across race mm -hmm. or marry across this. The only thing that I've ever counseled, don't marry across religion. Exactly. It's spiritual. This is a spiritual thing that Abraham's looking at, not just a, it's not it's race. No, race. It is, no, it isn't race. But that's what, this, somebody could take what you're teaching right now I do. and say, oh, look, that proves what I say about interracial marriages. It shouldn't happen. Okay, let's talk a little about interracial marriages. He's sending the servant back to his family and his kindred, right? And we are in the same place, positionally, that Abraham was. We are this side of the flood, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How much closer to the flood was uh, Abraham? How many generations removed from the flood is Abraham? From Noah. Sure. Yeah, from Noah. Oh, it has to be more than that. Four. Well, I, I could probably run that down. It ain't many. It isn't. But I can tell you this, if you take, if you, want to, if you want to take the racial teaching, that has to pull in evolution. In order to evolve the differences between the races, 
And remember, it starts from the flood from three full brothers. Right. You are not going to create who, you know, a, a red race, a white race, a black race, a yellow race, a brown race, and do it in 14 generations. It won't work that way. It cannot work that way. If, in fact, you want to take the whole racial aspect. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at what he's doing. Because of that close to the flood, <clears throat> if you take one name out of the genealogy, the Gittites are his family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, they're like second cousins. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Um, but you put the name into the genealogy, and that's where the difference occurs, and that's Eber. Remember Eber, where that name Hebrew comes from? It's Abraham the Hebrew, Abraham the son of Eber, descendant of Eber. He is sending his servant back to the only place he knows that that line is still there, and that is his brother. Okay? The descendants of his brother. So, Rebecca, when she gets down to Isaac, they are both descendants of Eber. Okay? The Hittites, and everybody else in Canaan for that matter, are not descendants of Eber, but they are of the same family that Eber came from. Now, if you can split that into a race, mm -hmm. I kiss your foot again in Macy's window. <laughs> no, it's not about race. It's about God's choice. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I told you before as we started off on this story about Abraham, after we got into about the 19th chapter, that Genesis, the focus of Genesis, God's word doesn't turn, but the focus changes. Have you noticed now how the focus has turned from history to biography? We had creation. Were you there? Somebody wrote it down for you, didn't they? We read it. That's history. We had the fall. Now, we were involved in it, but we weren't there yet. We read that as history. You have the flood. <coughs> I wasn't on the ark, but I read about it. That's history. You have the rise of nations after battle. And languages. That's history. Now, those are those, the large four events prior to uh, Abraham coming onto the biblical scene. And once he's there, you're going to see this whole thing switch from history to the biography of a few people that God has chosen, beginning with Abraham. It's Abraham, and, and I'm talking in Genesis now because that's what Rick asked me to teach. Starts with Abraham, goes to Isaac, goes to Jacob, goes to Joseph, and the book stops. That's Genesis. Now, we'll see the places these people go. We're going to see where this servant goes. But it's about what these people do. It's about how they react and how God deals with them and through them to the areas where they are. That's why this is becoming very important. And that's one of the great types that's going to show. God will use all different, he will use every gift of that five-fold ministry. Some are going to be apostles and some prophets and some teachers. You know how that goes. And you're going to get what you need. You can, you can count on that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they're all going to be at the same place at the same time. Doesn't mean they're all going to be saying the same message at the same time. Except one, once you get to the side of Calvary, it's going to be gospel, 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 gospel. That's where it's going to start. That's where it's going to end. Because that's the power of God unto salvation. History, as interesting as it can be, as illustrious as it can be, has no saving power in it whatsoever. But the gospel does. Now, having read 24, and having read just these first verses that we've talked about so far, and we've been talking and hinting around the edges about types and shadows and everything. Has anybody seen a type or a shadow kind of wandering around in chapter 24? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear what you got. Bride of Bride. Christ. Bride, Bride of Christ. Right. Have you heard that one before? What is, okay, now we're going to talk race. Yeah. What is the nationality of the Bride of Christ? Gentile. What's Rebecca? Gentile. No, she's not. She's the daughter of Hebrew. Oh, Hebrew. Hebrew. That's right. That's right. Hebrew. Family of Hebrew. Now, if she's the bride, now I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on you, Frank. Yeah, I'm just saying that's less your heart. Yeah. Not a problem. I'm I'm Don't, totally open. I'm good. 
I ain't picking on you. Let him pick on you. If you fight back, I will. But I'm not picking on you. <laughs> okay? If, if Rebecca is the bride of Christ, who leads her to Christ? I'm sorry. So if Rebecca is the bride of Christ, who leads her to Christ? The servant. The servant. So the servant is whom in the type? Comforter. Okay. What did you say? Comforter. Oh. How many have heard that taught before? Because, boy, I sure have. I've heard it in the morning service, and I've heard it in the evening service. Can't say I've heard it here, but I have heard it. You're shaking your head. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I've never heard it taught exactly that way, so I'm not disagreeing. You're just wondering. No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm indifferent right now, and I'm going to have to... Read it and think about it before I make up my mind. Well, you hold fast to that indifference, and without picking on them, I'm about ready to jump on you tight. Because we're going to keep reading here. And I've heard, I've heard this. I'm, I've I'm heard just saying this. that's what my sure. understanding is. It's was. one of the first things. Isaac, Isaac was typed Christ. Rebecca tri typed the bride of Christ. Isaac types Christ on Moriah. He's right. on Moriah. He doesn't type Christ anymore. Because in the mount of the Lord it will be seen. And a type has to be seen. Now, that's, I'm not saying that's definitive or dispositive. I'm saying that sets the tone for what we're about to see happen here. Uh, okay, so he, he takes ten camels, right? The servant takes ten camels. Um, uh, verse 10. Uh, the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand and he rose and he went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor and they'll tell you that's Haran. Maybe, probably not. Uh, the city of Nahor is probably near Haran but probably not in it. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening even the time that women go out to draw water. Uh, that would be better translated at the time that the women who draw water go out. Mm. <clears throat> By the way, in the Oriental society, who draws of the women who draws the water? Servant, I suppose. Servants and unmarried mm. daughters. And you can tell the difference by looking. And he made the camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time when the women go out to draw water. And he said, who's he supposed to type? The, you're Christ. talking the, the, the or servant the of Abraham. Abraham? Yeah, who's he supposed to type? The Spirit. The Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's going to pray to himself now and says, Lord God of my master Abraham, you want to tell me that the Holy Spirit has a master? No. No man is a master of God. No man orders God. No man can place God under an obligation. So I'm telling you, it may be illustrative of what will happen there. It is not a time. Hmm. Uh, my master, Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto. Is he asking that his job be made easier? No. Show kindness to my master Abraham. Abraham isn't sweating anything out here by the well. Right. But he wants this done. He wants it done quickly and he wants it done right. And he's sworn an oath to do it. <clears throat> and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall not drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, that, the, that it be the same as she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby I'll know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. Now there's some real hints before you. He's laying down terms for God. I tell you what, I'm going to say this, this, and this, and if it happens, and that's because then you're speaking to me. You ever tried that? <laughs> well, not me, Gideon, fleece. Jeez. Gideon threw a fleece down before God, but it's I, I, I don't know. And we've always wondered about you know that. Well, should he have done such a thing? I've, I've done the proverbial fleece thing. So have I. And I, I, you know, I can't say that in my spirit and that I was confident that that was 
really God's will or the right. It's down to that issue of revelation and confirmation, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. I see that hand. I, the, the, the very same thing happened to Don and I. When we prayed about finding the piece of property that we're on right now, I wasn't nearly as picky as she was, but she laid down four different terms of what we were looking for in the property. Mm -hmm. And when it popped up, it was like, oh, okay. That pretty well answered that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether the fleece, I'm just gonna speak from experience, right? Whether the fleece is thrown out or not, God answers prayer. Mm -hmm. Whether I state my terms or only wish them, God answers prayer. If I have them and don't state them, he still knows what they are. And he still answers prayer. But watch what he does for the servant. Before the servant is even done speaking, that prayer is answered in every detail. He doesn't have to wonder. He's on the right track. He knows that. And it came to pass before he was done speaking, this is verse 15 of chapter 24, that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher on her shoulder. So Bethuel, the son of Nahor, is Isaac's first cousin. Mm -hmm. Now he's older than Isaac because it took a while for Abraham and Sarah to bring forth a promise. Mm -hmm. But it came right on time. And it was because God didn't want Isaac marrying Bethuel's sister. He wants Isaac marrying Bethuel's daughter. <laughs> That's the way it's going to work out. And the damsel was, oh, oh very fair to look upon. You notice that the servant didn't pray for that? The servant doesn't say, let her be the best looking gal in town. Let her be the one that says, let her be the one who demonstrates hospitable. No. In those times, he had the right of a guest to ask for a sip of water. And that's what he's asking for, a sip. It is her responsibility as a host representing the city to provide the water for him to drink. She's under absolutely no obligation to pull any water out for those camels. <coughs> and he doesn't ask her to. She offers to. Now, that's hospitality in spades. One of those camels can take on about 25 gallons. And there are 10 of them. You want to do the math? 250. That's a lot of for it. Five 50 gallon barrels. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's very fair to look upon. A virgin neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her. And said, let me, I pray thee, drink a little of thy pitcher. That drink a little, that's that sip that I was referring to. In Hebrew, it's sip. And she said, not sip, drink deeply. That word drink is drink deeply. And she hasted to let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when he was done giving him drink, she says, I will draw the water for the camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again under the well and drew water and drew for all his camels. Kind of makes you wonder what his servants are doing, doesn't it? Because he's not there alone. He didn't take 10 camels and go ahead and off for 500 miles by himself. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking and the man took a golden earring of half a shekel of weight and two bracelets for her hands of 10 shekels <coughs> of the weight of gold. Now, remember when he was back dealing for the cave at Hebron, it was shekels of silver. There's no silver on this trip. This is gold. <clears throat> and said, whose daughter art thou? Now, why would he ask that question? Family. Well, yeah, but didn't God already show him the same? Didn't family. God already show him this is the one? <clears throat> Confirmation. Uh... There are two things going on here. He's asked God in prayer to show him. He has sworn an oath to Abraham apart from that prayer of my family you bring this woman. He has to satisfy himself. He has to satisfy the oath that he sworn to Abraham. 
Now this is the faithfulness of the servant. If in fact it's Eliezer or his son. If Isaac doesn't marry and Isaac has no heir, the servant is the heir. Mm -hmm. Ishmael's already been dismissed. He's gone. No birthright. It comes back to the legality then and that's going to be the oldest servant in his household. And yet, if you look at the servant, you would think he doesn't have a dog in this fight. I want, you know, let's do this for Abraham and you know, we show kindness to Abraham. And that, and that will magnify as we go on. Well, Jay, in 21, yeah. it says, And the man wondering at her mm -hmm. remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Does that remind you of anybody? Well, I guess what I was meaning is, it took a while to water those camels. <coughs> yes, it did. So he sat there, and I think he was waiting, kind of, for an answer. Could have been. I mean, he sat there, remained silent, and I mean, it wasn't like, I mean, I just think that. He held his peace to wit whether the Lord yeah. had made his journey prosperous, prosperous or not. I think he's pondering. Yes, he is. I think so. I've yeah. prayed. She's come out. I've seen. Yep. He's not sure. Yep. That's what you I You said you threw out a police. How sure were you? Not really. But your book tells you that God answers prayer. Yep. Yeah. There's a question about this. She... Uh, comes out and, and delivers 250 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. Was that just because she's so nice, or was this like a kind of a business thing? Like somebody come, runs up and washes your windows? And, I mean, not to belittle the situation. But. Okay, she's the daughter of Bethuel, who is the daughter of Nahor, who isn't as thinking race as Abraham is, but he's proud of him. No, she's not. This is no business deal. Okay, this was actually a hospital. She does she doesn't not know who need this then. guy at all. Okay, that's what I was thinking. It's no never mind to her whether he <laughs> comes or not, personally at this point. And if you look at the uh, the narrative, until she does what he's done, she doesn't bring out the the, the tokens of the gold. No. She doesn't see that when she makes the offer. She does afterwards. Oh, right, right. Now the servant, once she says who she is, he brings it out here. Now, let's watch. Uh, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bears Nahor. And she said, Moreover unto him, we have both strong provender and us in, in, in a room to lodge him. And the man bowed down his head and thanked her. Worship, worship the Lord. Yeah. Now he's got an answer to prayer because he's confirmed part of the oath that he swore. This yeah. is not just this is Abraham's household. This is his family. That's what he's that's what he's supposed to bring back. Nobody else. And although one is shown to him, he doesn't know at this point she's the only one. But if you go back and you read, you'll find out there's all those sons. There is one daughter, Rebecca. They're all named. And she's one of the few where where you, if you look at those genealogies where a female is named in that genealogical line, but Rebecca is, and there's a reason that that is there. God is just holding this up. You know, when the servant goes back, he can't miss. <clears throat> Abraham's not there to direct it. I'm going to send the angel, and I'm going to I'll guard every step he takes. But it's the faithfulness of that servant, and, how, and, 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 and God will reward it all. Isaac is rewarded, Abraham is rewarded, the servant is rewarded. I'll bless him who blesses you, and I'll curse him that curses you. And he just prays down the blessing on Abraham. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy. This is the 27th verse. <clears throat> and his truth. Both elements are there. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. The damsel ran and told him to her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother. And his, what would be a marriage be without a good brother-in-law? Mm -hmm. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban, and Laban ran unto the man and unto the well, and it came to pass, 
when he saw, pay real close attention to that, when he saw the earrings and the bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister saying, Thus spake the man unto me, then he came unto the man, and he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, he undergirded his camels, and gave strong provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. I told you, that servant was not alone. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. This is not a type of the Holy Spirit. This is a type if you want to type it, to Christian service. You know, Christian service. He knows what he's doing, and he knows who has sent him. That's what an apostle is. So, I'm not going to read through, because he's going to recount word for word what he swore to Abraham and what happened on the way. He's also going to be very, very positive and state before I was done praying for this guidance, the answer came. Out came your sister, Rebecca. Quotes her verbatim, quotes himself verbatim. He says, this is a very truthful man. <clears throat> and I bowed my head down and worshiped the Lord. This is verse 48. The story is he's, he's finishing off the narrative. And bless the Lord God of my master Abraham, which has led me in the right way to take my master's brother's son unto his wife. Now, that's a pretty definite description. My master's brother's uh, daughter unto his son. Now, and now, if you will deal kindly, notice there's an if there. If you will deal kindly and truly, with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me that I may return to the right or to the left. Now, he doesn't say, I'm going to go home. But he told him whose servant he is. And by this time, in that family, everybody knows who has the blessing. Everybody knows who has that hedges of God around him and the protection. Now, the servant just simply says, I'll know, you tell me whether you're going to help me fulfill this thing. And that'll tell me what I've got to do next, and he doesn't tell him what it is. Then Laban, or our Jewish friends would say, Laban, and Bethuel answered and said, Notice this is father and son. Laban and Bethuel. Bethuel is the father. Answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee, good or bad, bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. Pretty definite, isn't it? There's, they use words there you can hear in church a lot. There was a let's say of the Lord. They just came floating right out there. See that? <laughs> and it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. He's going to take him at their word. And the servant brought forth jewels. Now out comes the silver, out comes jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them. Now notice what he gives them to. To Rebekah, he gave also to her brother, that's Laban, and to her mother, precious things. The plot now thickens. And they did eat and drink, and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother, Laban, and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten. After that she shall go. Is that what was said earlier? Take her and go. Mm -hmm. Out comes the gold and the silver. Oh, I'll tell you what, hang around her a little bit. Mm -hmm. We might be able to milk this cow a little longer. Now, I'm going to give you this warning as we go on through uh, uh, Genesis. Don't you ever take your eye off Laban. Yeah. Everybody talks about how Jacob is the supplanter and the sneak. He ain't a patch to Laban. Mm -hmm. This guy's got an eye for the main chance. 
Oh, come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We'll have special meetings right here in front of you. <laughs> By the way, you'll notice how snarky and sarcastic I got with that one, and I can do that, and I can do it with biblical authority without without prejudgment, because when, by the time you separate these two families uh, with Jacob, where do the idols come from? Mm. Laban's family. Right. These, these guys are walking on both sides of that fence. And they said, we will call them, and he says, oh, hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master, this guy's gonna finish the job. And they said, we will call the damsel and acquire her mouth. Well, and now they're passing the buck. Well, first we said she could go, but now, that, well, Dad said she could go, but her mother and I think she ought to stay, and you ought to give us some more of these things. <laughs> I'll believe you, Greg. Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll ask her, and we'll see what she says. And her response is, uh, I will go. And they sent away Rebecca, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men, and they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those that hate them. And Rebekah arose and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac, we're making a long story short now, we're just jumped, just a little over 500 miles. And Isaac came from the way of the well of Hyroi, for he dwelt in the south country. <clears throat> and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes when she saw Isaac and lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the fields of Medus? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done, and Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, took Rebekah, and she became his wife, Second time you see the word. Third time, actually. Loved her. Twice it's used of Isaac, and now it's, now it's of Rebecca. And Isaac was comforted after uh, his mother's death. Now, this doesn't mean that he's been sitting around here for three or four years bawling his eyes out. It means that from the time of his mother's death, uh, when Rebecca comes, that he finds comfort after his mother's death. Okay. Now, I have heard this taught that the servant is the Holy Spirit. I have even heard this taught that the camels she rode were the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now do you see why I tell you that if you take a physical thing, it can only type what the Spirit does in the physical. It cannot type the spiritual. Physical, natural types. Physical, natural, spiritual types. You, you cannot make, because eventually the physical will break down into the type. This one doesn't even start out rolling on all four tires. That servant has a master who is a man on earth. That is That does not describe or type the Holy Spirit in any way, shape, or form. It types a very, very, very faithful servant. And since he's acting... <coughs> In behalf of Abraham, who does not go, do you realize that this is actually Abraham doing it? Abraham hmm. doing? This is actually Abraham accomplishing the work. He's doing it through his oh, servant. Yeah. But it's actually Abraham that's doing it. Now who's typing who? You see, the types don't work. It's under Abraham's authority. And we're going to see this work out in the life of Isaac, because Jacob is going to tell Laban to his face, the reason you acted the way that you did is because my grandfather was Abraham and because of the fear of Isaac. That's a real fear. We're not talking respect and awe here. We're talking, we're scared of military prowess. That's, that's going to develop. But at this point, that's all future to them. We're looking back, you know, through this biography. But what does Laban see? The gold and the silver. And, that's, he, and he, he, that type's going to hold. The world will go for the gold first and go for the silver second. And it'll do whatever it'll have to do to come back with both. <clears throat> she sees Isaac in the field. She gets off the camels 
asks who this guy is, and when the servant tells him who it is, then she puts on the veil. Mm -hmm. Does that strike you as being a little odd? And from our point of view, it kind of is. If a veil is required for modesty, why is she unveiled in the presence of this steward and his servants? For 500 miles. Yeah. No. It says she alighted from the camel, right? That in itself, in the Orient, is a mark of respect. You do not talk down at meeting. You stand on the ground. And the veil, this is not like the bridal veil, and I've heard that preached. The veil is actually a covering which goes from the head to the foot. It's a full body wrap, and it is shown as the sign of respect for a future husband. Mm. Mm. That's not that does not describe the servant or any of you know the steward or any of those servants, but it describes Isaac, and she's the only one he does it for. And then the Bible tells us he loved her. All right. When do, you, you get, yeah? do you think what she put on was what was given to her by the servant back in the... It very well could have been, and it could have been so that Isaac would have recognized it when he saw it. But oh, I'm not going to rule out the fact that this gal didn't have a hope chest. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm just saying. We know how Marriage moms and daughters are. Given. Right. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Neither one, but I'll tell you what. You want to talk about love at first sight? There it is. Yeah, exactly. There it is. If anybody asks if you can believe on it, you can quote the 24th chapter of Genesis. Well, and your own experience, of course. Well, of course. Ten tail. Almost ready for church. Did I stumble anybody mm -hmm. with the issue of types? Now, I'm not saying that it, does, it isn't illustrative of that, but it doesn't type it. Question? Comment? See some resolutely set chin. Uh, I don't see any. There's a question, yeah. who she is. I doubt very much that she walks out of Beth Bill's house alone. Yeah, I guess that, that was not mentioned in the Bible, but I'm just saying that, you know, 200, The Bible does say water. when the women who draw water come yes. forth, yes. and she was out there. She's not alone, and she's not alone from her house. Okay. No. Okay. I guess that, but, yeah, she might not have drawn all of them. It would have taken half a day if you're going to raise that water out of the well of the pump. No, she had help. Yeah, yeah. Right. Bill, would you like to? Oh, I don't want to cut. Any, I don't want to cut anything off. Here. I, I'm just. Bill, would you close your prayer?